ever wondered about Edwards syndrome, also known as trisomy 18? It's a rare chromosomal disorder that intrigues genetic researchers worldwide. For those who may not be familiar, Edwards syndrome or trisomy 18 is a rare genetic condition characterized by the presence of an extra copy of chromosome 18. This additional chromosome is not an accessory but rather an unwelcome guest that brings with it a host of complications. The occurrence of Edwards syndrome is rare, with estimates suggesting that it affects approximately one in every 6,000 live births. It's this rarity, combined with the complex nature of the disorder, that sparks curiosity and drives research within the scientific community. The name trisomy 18 comes from the fact that the syndrome is caused by the presence of three copies or trisomy of chromosome 18. Typically, we should have two copies of each chromosome, one from our mother and one from our father. However, in the case of trisomy 18, there's an extra third copy of chromosome 18, hence the name. The effects of this extra chromosome are far-reaching, disrupting normal cellular processes and leading to a range of physical and mental health challenges. These may include severe intellectual disabilities and a variety of congenital anomalies, which are health conditions that are present from birth. Interestingly, Edwards syndrome is known by another name in medical circles, Edwards syndrome. This is in recognition of the British geneticist John Hilton Edwards, who first described the disorder back in the 1960s. His pioneering work laid the foundation for much of our current understanding of the syndrome. Despite the progress made in understanding Edwards syndrome, there's still much to learn. The mechanisms that result in the formation of the extra chromosome, the wide-ranging effects it has on the human body, and most importantly, effective ways to manage and potentially cure the syndrome are all areas of ongoing research. Now you know what Edwards syndrome is, let's delve into the mechanics of this intriguing disorder. So, how does Edwards syndrome occur? It's all about an extra chromosome. To fully grasp this, we have to delve into the realm of genetics. Edwards syndrome, or trisomy 18, happens due to a genetic abnormality known as meiotic non-disjunction during the formation of a sperm or an egg cell, also known as gametes. In a typical scenario, a pair of chromosomes splits up during meiosis, the process that creates these gametes. Each gamete gets one chromosome from the pair, ready to combine with a chromosome from the other parent's gamete during fertilization. But sometimes, this division doesn't go as planned. Meiotic non-disjunction is when the pair of chromosomes fails to separate properly. This mishap results in one gamete getting an extra chromosome. And when this gamete is involved in fertilization, the resulting embryo ends up with three copies of a chromosome instead of the usual pair. In the case of Edwards syndrome, it's an extra chromosome 18 that's the culprit. However, not all cases of Edwards syndrome are due to this meiotic misstep. A small proportion of cases result from a phenomenon called mosaicism. This occurs when the non-disjunction event happens not during meiosis, but later during embryonic development, specifically during mitotic cell division. This results in the individual having a mix of cells, some with the usual pair of chromosome 18 and some with an extra copy. These individuals often have milder symptoms compared to those with full trisomy 18. Whether it's trisomy 18 or mosaicism, these genetic abnormalities cause disruptions to normal cellular processes. Each cell's function is dictated by the genes it contains, and when there's an extra chromosome thrown into the mix, it can throw everything off balance. Genes can be overexpressed or underexpressed. Cellular pathways can be disrupted, and the result can be a cascade of effects that lead to the diverse and often severe symptoms seen in Edwards syndrome. These genetic abnormalities disrupt normal cellular processes, leading to the characteristic features of Edwards syndrome. Edwards syndrome presents with a variety of clinical manifestations. This rare chromosomal disorder paints a broad spectrum of symptoms, ranging from severe intellectual disabilities to an array of congenital anomalies. Imagine a palette filled with different shades of clinical presentations, each one unique to the individual affected. Among the most common physical features, we find rocker bottom feet, a condition where the feet appear rounded at the bottom, much like a rocking chair. There's also the prominent occiput, 
Characterized by a protruding or pronounced back of the skull, micrognathia or a small jaw and low set ears are other typical characteristics that often accompany Edwards syndrome. But the clinical manifestations are not just skin deep. Edwards syndrome often extends its influence to the heart, leading to congenital heart defects. Renal abnormalities affecting the kidneys are also part of the package. And let's not forget the distinctive hand posture where the third and fourth fingers overlap. What makes Edwards syndrome particularly fascinating and challenging is its variability. The same disorder can manifest differently from one individual to another. Some may have a more severe form, others a milder presentation. This variability in clinical features, this heterogeneity, is part of what makes each case of Edwards syndrome unique. The mixture and severity of these symptoms can vary, making Edwards syndrome a heterogeneous disorder. While management of Edwards syndrome is currently focused on supportive care, new research offers hope for targeted interventions. Delving into the realm of potential therapeutic avenues, recent advancements in genomic medicine are lighting the path towards more targeted interventions. Imagine the possibility of gene therapy, a novel approach aimed at correcting the very chromosomal abnormality that underpins Edwards syndrome. By targeting the root cause of the disorder, we could potentially circumvent the cascading genetic disruptions that lead to its characteristic features. Yet gene therapy is just one side of the coin. We also have pharmacological strategies that target specific molecular pathways implicated in the pathogenesis of Edwards syndrome. By honing in on these pathways, we can mitigate the effects of the extra chromosome 18, offering a lifeline to those affected by the syndrome. But treatment is not just about medications and therapies. It's also about providing comprehensive care and support. Early intervention programs, for instance, are vital. These programs focus on multidisciplinary care and supportive therapies, ranging from physical therapy to speech and occupational therapies. They aim to improve the quality of life for individuals affected by Edwards syndrome, helping them navigate the world with fewer obstacles. With continued research, we hope to develop novel therapeutic interventions and improve outcomes for those affected by Edwards syndrome. After all, every step forward in our understanding of this complex disorder brings us closer to a future where Edwards syndrome is not a life sentence, but a condition that can be managed and treated effectively.